Praise the Lord. Amen. I bring greetings to you once more in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Um, I will be speaking on a topic I titled Displaying the Spirit of Your Father. Amen. Displaying the Spirit of Your Father. Before I do so, I just want to thank those of you that have been consistent and uh, for your, your continuous show of love and your prayers for the words of encouragement I do receive the emails and uh, comments I take my time to read your comments and uh, your emails I want to thank you and I want to bless God for you you have truly um, affected my life in a positive way and the Bible says iron sharpened iron I trust God that through the undiluted Word of God that we preach on um, using the social media platforms such as TikTok, Facebook YouTube Instagram and uh, and uh, um, Twitter amen and some other that I may not be able to mention there are too many of them I just want to thank God for you in case you're listening or you're watching from TikTok, um, if you don't have the complete message please I, I implore your honor with utmost humility to go to the face, um, Facebook or YouTube channel the YouTube channel the church online and listen to the complete message hallelujah um, I'm writing a book I've been right I'm writing a book that I titled the, the misconception about the personality of Jesus amen the misconception about the personality of Jesus I'm not gonna be speaking about the book or much about it but I just wanna give you an abstract or give you an insight of what the book is all about because we have confused ourselves many people are confused about the personality of Christ Jesus Christ some don't see Jesus as God even though we profess him to be God you know but in reality a lot of us don't believe that Jesus is God even though we admit in principle that he is God the truth is that there's a lot the prophet in the Bible said about God that we are lies. There's a lot of things in the Old Testament that we are quoted as to be God saying, but God never said it. It may interest you to know that none of the prophets saw God none of them none Moses Elijah named them none of them saw God but a lot of things the prophets of old did we attributed to God good and bad they attributed it to God the misconception does it mean they lied no they didn't lie but the misinformation um, rather those that interpreted the scripture misquoted out of context about Christ and I've had some people questioning the God of the Old Testament is so mean and wicked than the God of the New Testament have you engaged in such arguments as a theologian I have heard even when I did theology 101 have, the argument came up about the God of the Old Testament and God of the New Testament and that baffles me that even some religious scholars still believe that God was so mean in the Old Testament he did a lot of things in the Old Testament he killed a lot of people in the Old Testament and he became a merciful God and compassionate God a just God in the New Testament those are lies from the pit of hell that's why through the auction of the Holy Spirit I'm writing this book by the grace of God by next year 
I will be on a on a book tour to spread this message of truth about Jesus, the personality of Christ that we um, misinformed people about. A lot, Moses, a lot of stuff we are said that Moses saw God, Moses, Moses never saw God. Moses saw angels, for instance. A lot of things happened We are attributed to God. Is this generation we are that we are so privileged? We are so privileged to see, to witness what Moses, Elijah, had wished they could have witnessed. What we are witnessing, the Holy Spirit we have, that we could, they didn't have it. Angels spoke to them. Angels ministered to them. Moses said, manna came from heaven. Manna didn't come from heaven. A lot of misconception. But like I said, I'm not going to dive into this because whatever I am writing in that book, I backed it up with scriptures. I backed them up with scriptures for you to understand that the Bible is being uh, uh, misrepresented, mistranslated in such a manner it gave God a very negative identity in the Old Testament and a somehow positive identity and tried to confuse you to believe that Jesus was just a mere messenger of God or, or maybe a child of God, you know, but they forgot that Jesus is God that came to demonstrate God as a family man. So I am writing this book through the unction of the Holy Spirit to expose a lot of things. Amen. So it's important I share this with you and we are going to weaken the kingdom of darkness by depopulating it and populating the kingdom of God. Amen. So as a child of God, you have to display the spirit of your father. You have to possess the spirit of your father. First of all, you have to understand that God is not a killer. So if you find yourself in a church that your pastor, your pastor measures so much on praying for people to die. When you go to church, what the pastor does, whoever that offends the pastor, the pastor is very, very eager to pray for the person to die. And you are doing the same thing. I have something to tell you. You are practicing wizardry. You are practicing witchcraft, not Christianity. Remember, I told you the last time, Christianity is a lifestyle. Is the lifestyle of Christ we are trying to emulate? Christ and the masses is our culture, and culture is the way of life of a people. So Jesus is a life we are emulating by being Christians. So when you go to church. Your pastor said, pray, 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 pray for this person to die. And does it occur to you, when you pray for such person to die, <laughs> the person leaves? i give you an example, for instance. As a Nigerian, we once had a president um, who just left office. I don't want to mention his name, but he just left office. This is 2023. He left office in 2023. I believe he came into office in 2015. A lot of preachers, pastors big preachers they were praying for this man to die because one they never liked him and the man was sick they prayed for this sick man to die the man was very sick being old come on it's not a bad thing for an old man to be sick but they 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 were so eager to see the man die and do you know what happened instead of the man dying <laughs> God gave him more life. The man won, won uh, ruled his first tenor four years and came back and <laughs> won for eight years. Instead of the man that was old, before he became president to die, the man was getting younger and younger. So, religion is the biggest enemy in Africa, especially in Nigeria. That is where you have all these false prophets, false teachers of the world that try to confuse you 
about God as an evil man that can pray for somebody to die so you could fear them. Those people are witches. They are white witches. We call them W-H-I-T-E, white witches. That's what we call white witches. White witches. They, that's what they are. These are sorcerers. So if your pastor is part of this uh, cult group, leave that church without hesitation. Leave that church because the pastor is operating under the spirit, under the demonic spirit of vengeance. Not the Holy Spirit, not the sweet spirit of God, but under the demonic spirit of vengeance. And the only thing he gives you is anger, hatred against one another. So that's why it's important that you listen to this message. After this message, ask yourself, are you displaying the spirit of your father? So you go to church, you pray, and you think you are satisfied after praying. You believe you have enemies, witches in your villages that are fighting you, witches in your villages that are after your success, and you're praying for them to die painfully. Instead of them to die, they are, prosp they are prospering, progressing, and you are going downwards, fasting in vain. Don't you know that witches also fast? Don't you know that Satan also fasts? Demonic agents also fast. So it depends on the spirit that you work with. Are you working with the spirit of God? Are you working with the spirit of your heavenly father? Or you're working with the spirit of your father, the devil? It's very important that we spread the gospel, the undiluted word of God. Amen. Now, there's something that distinguished you from the world is <clears throat> important very pertinent you understand we are in the world but not of the world we are in this world but we are not of this world the world they like facts the things that distinguished us is that the world they work with facts is it's good to work with facts if you are of the world definitely we work they work with facts but we, tongue-believing Christians, children of the Most High God, we walk by faith. Now, I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm going to give you the distinction between facts and faith. Hallelujah. Take, for instance, when you go to the hospital, doctors, they are good examples of those that work with facts. Many of them are faithful, tongue-speaking Christians. But because of the profession, they work with facts. So when you go to hospital, for doctor to declare you healed, there must be an evidence to prove that you are healed. That is facts. So working with facts means there is a proof of evidence that this person is healed. Now, that evidence is followed by an action. So you are in the hospital, doctor cannot discharge you unless there is evidence that you are healed. Now, once there is evidence that shows you are healed, the action that follows is for you to leave, be discharged from the hospital. Now, as a Christian, reverses the case. When you come for prayers, the man of God will tell you, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Action goes before evidence in the Christendom. Action goes before evidence. For example, Jesus saw the woman with the issue of blood. The woman touched Jesus. She was bleeding. She bled for 12 years. She was still bleeding and she touched Jesus. Jesus said something left him. I asked, who touched me? It was the woman. Now, Jesus said to the woman, Go, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. The action you took perfected the evidence you need. The action the woman took by touching the hem of his garment perfected the evidence she needed. Perhaps you need more explanation. How about the blind man? Jesus prayed. The man was still blind. 
The man was still blind when Jesus took action and said, Go at the pool and wash your eyes. He was still blind. Remember, there was no sight. But Jesus demonstrated action. Go and wash. How could a blind man go to wash? He did not say, Help him to go and wash at that pool. He said, Go. So the man was blind, walking as a blind man, until he got to the pool and he washed his eyes. Behold, the evidence showed up. So if you are a child of God, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Stop behaving as if you are of the world. When you are of the world, you need evidence before actions. You need evidence before action, but you are of your father. But when you are of your father in heaven, action goes before evidence. As an immigrant, I came from the poorest of the poor very poor but before i left my country to look to to travel overseas for greener pastures i spoke life into my destiny i spoke life into my own life and that faith i declared was an action that left before me and evidence is what people saw after six months that declaration of faith was made so today I just want you to understand the distinction you have with the world. So stop acting like somebody who does not know his God, the God he serves. I'm going to end this message by just taking us to uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 5. Amen. Matthew chapter 5. When you read from verse 1, it's about the Beatitudes. Jesus was trying to tell you stuff I just mentioned. In summary, Jesus was trying to let them know the misconceptions about him. Now, the prophet said, they saw Jesus. The prophet said this. The prophet and the people so much respected Moses. They so much reverend Elijah. Whenever you mention Moses, Abraham, everybody will prostrate and say, bow, they love the law of Moses. They loved everything about Moses. Moses was a demigod. He was a little God to them. But God came down. Now, take for instance, Moses was doing a report in direct speech. Moses will hear from the angels and Moses will report. Moses could not even differentiate the angel and God. So Moses was right to say God spoke to him, but that was a misconception. He didn't know God the difference between God and angel. So the law he got, it was an angel that gave him the law. Back then, there was no Holy Spirit. For them, God was not God of everybody. No, he wasn't God of the Gentiles, mind you. He was just the God of the Israelites. So when they go to war, they say the God of the Israels. But now, he is God of everybody. So Moses heard from angels. But Moses said, God spoke to him. God spoke to him. It's just like a representative of a president coming to an event and speaking because he's representing the president and he's speaking authoritatively, giving instructions about the president. It's okay for you to go and quote and say, the president said this, the president said that. But the truth is that you did not hear it directly from the president. But Jesus, in Matthew chapter 5, was trying to correct those errors the prophets made. Jesus was correcting the errors, the misconception, the misapplication of the facts. And Jesus said, no, it wasn't God. Imagine God himself. Those people were demigods, but God they claimed they heard from was speaking to them and saying, no, I didn't say this. No, I didn't send manna from heaven. Can you imagine that? I didn't send manna from heaven. No, no. Elijah didn't call fire from heaven. No, this didn't happen. No eyes have seen the Lord. Jesus says, no eyes have seen God. But we are privileged to witness what they prayed for. So when you read Matthew chapter 5. I want you to start from verse 1. Read it with humility to understand 
that Jesus came not to destroy the laws, but to correct the impression, to correct the negative impressions about God. Jesus, God, the Bible says, God changes not. So how could God of the Old Testament, he was so mean, and suddenly he became a good guy in the New Testament. No. Misconception, misapplication of power. Elijah turned the children, little kids, into animals. Many prophets, uh, 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 um, Elijah destroyed the prophets of Baal. It was a God. But listen, when God gives you power and authority, you make use of them. On the last day, he will ask you about the powers he gave. Let me give you an example. Imagine a police officer here in the United States. Whenever they go on patrols, they use their cars. They sign for a gun. That gun they have is a symbol of power. But not authority. Not legitimate authority to kill anyhow. Now, you have heard cases of police killing in America. These are human beings. Because they have the, the gun, they have the authority to carry the gun, but not authority to kill anyhow to kill innocent citizens. But because that gun is being backed up by a superior authority for them to carry it, they could make use of it and they can give reasons why they made use of it. So it is with a man of God. God gives us power to exercise. So we can kill in the name of God. That does not mean that God sanctioned the killing. God did not ask us does not want us to kill. He wants us to save. Because when you kill, are you populating the kingdom of God or are you populating the kingdom of darkness? That's the question you ask yourself. So police folks, some of them kill, extrajudicial killing, and what happened? They will come and account for the bullets. Say, so what happened? Why did you kill this person? Killing, was it a good thing? Was it a correction and mistake? Why did you kill? They must account for every bullet. Every child of God must account for all the anointing, the power of God you displayed. So Elijah had opportunity of saving the lives of the prophets of Baal, converting them. But because there was no Holy Spirit, he misused the power. Now, you could say God killed the prophets of Baal. No, Elijah killed. Elijah was the custodian of God's power and anointing at that moment. He killed, not God. Hallelujah. It's very important because I want you to understand this about God because a lot of people get confused and they get so sad thinking God is mean, God is wicked, God is that. They've given up on faith in God. No. It's important. I explain this to you. Now, let me read um, Matthew chapter 5. For those of you that goes to church, all you do is to pray for people to die. You've, you've done that in error. But now you have been corrected. If you keep doing it, mark today's date. You... It, the prayer will work against you and your family members. When you pray for somebody to die, your family will be the one dying. Mark today's date. You have done it on error. If you pray in the name of God for people to die, for people to not to be prosperous, see what will happen in your life. The Bible says, Matthew eleven twelve. Until the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. We are in that day. We are not gonna we're gonna stop sugarcoating things and speak it the way it is. Because a lot of people are using um, social media platform to promote stupidity, all in the name of preaching the gospel. We have to stop that. We have to stop this promotion of stupidity. Many of them are not content creators, they don't preach to win souls, to convince people in the name of Jesus, to come to the cross. No, because 
what they do they do marketing they promote their content by marketing so they can make money from viewership i have i i, I don't i can't make money from this if anything i made money it goes to uh, um charity organization i don't i am here to preach the gospel not as a content creator not to make money from this social platform but to make sure that the word of god the undiluted word of god reaches you and saves life and put devil to shame so if you have prayed that prayer in error it's okay but today you have heard the good news if you keep doing it it will hurt you more it will work against you because that is not the spirit of god that we serve amen so i'm gonna read from verse 43 but at your pace please start from verse 1 so you can understand it matthew chapter 5 from verse 43 i'm gonna read it new king james version says love your enemies you have heard that it was said now jesus was quoting the prophet he said you have heard it was said who said it moses said it you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy that was the law but jesus says in verse 44 but i said to you love your enemies bless those that curse you do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you jesus is speaking in verse 46 he's, in verse 45 he says that you may be sons of your father in heaven that you may be sons of your father in heaven amen i love jesus for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust Jesus was trying to let them know God does not segregate. In verse 46, For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. Remember, back then, tax collectors were heavy sinners. They are good examples when you want to illustrate evil. They represent evil. Then, not present tax collectors. We love those in IRS. Hallelujah. And Revenue Canada. We love you guys. In verse 47, And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Jesus wasn't trying to discredit Moses. But he said, he told you. Moses was speaking about me, but he spoke in error. But this is the son of man speaking. This is the son of man speaking. A lot of misconception. I've had some pastors who are so evil-minded. Evil Somebody was sharing it like a testimony that he prayed for somebody to get job a pastor and the person brought her first seed like her first income all her income brought it and gave to the pastor and the pastor comfortably squandered the money and was sharing it as a testimony the pastor failed to understand that he laid a curse on himself somebody made money first income you ask the person bring your whole first income somebody that had been out of job no work he got man, he got employed his first income bring it and you squandered it sometimes i wonder the type of scriptures you read or who interprets the scripture for you and now how did the young lady pay her bills she had to borrow she had to dip into, into debt. What kind of God are you talking about? You went to school. You spent years in the university. You got a job. A man without a degree who claimed to be a pastor now told you, bring the money. And the man was living fat. And your parents are in abject poverty and an ingrate. 
that a satan a satan incarnate in the name of christianity deceived you and took your money your hard work and squandered it no wonder it says my people perish because they lack knowledge where in the scripture if you willingly give money to the gospel needs money i say willingly but this is fraud it must stop it must stop it's not anywhere in the scriptures so jesus was trying to correct the imp everything in the old testament he was trying to correct them he came to fulfill them so that's why i'm writing that book the misconception about the personality of jesus because it's okay to call god to say god bless you but it's, people find it very funny to say to say jesus bless you god anybody can you can anything can be god but there is only one jesus by whom we are saved but you can't boldly say jesus bless you but you can say god bless you because of this misconception and you're asking who is jesus is he truly god or just a son of god by the grace of god we are gonna be alive to see 2024 when the book will be launched and a lot of things will be explained backing them up with the scriptures through the help of the holy spirit we must get it right our generation must get it right so when we get to heaven we will say thank you jesus for the inspiration we got it right god bless you until i see you next time i remain your humble servant in the lord apostle sir henry exabira